John Nelson's land was an oasis in the middle of Haiti's dry and dusty central plateau. The soil was covered with a rich carpet of organic matter, fallen from the trees that had engulfed his well-terraced farm. Mango, citrus, coconut, and even trees used to make fine furniture shaded his young coffee plants. John was a hardworking and entrepreneurial farmer, but he was never too busy to put down his machete and take us on a tour. He knew each one of the thousands of trees that he had planted. With a wide, kind grin, he would pull out some chairs and we would visit. And as we readied ourselves to leave, he would cut some sugar cane for everyone to suck on as we trudged on to the next farm. John Nelson was a carbon farmer. Actually, he was a small farmer who grew many things, including coffee, but lately, sequestering carbon in his trees had become pretty lucrative. He was an early eager collaborator in a carbon offset project that we, the University of the South, had initiated with the Haitian nonprofit organization called Partners in Agriculture, or PIA. PIA works with Haitian farmers in the central plateau of Haiti to raise agricultural productivity and food security throughout the region. You may be wondering, what is a carbon offset? We all know that the climate crisis facing us is caused largely by rising levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere from burning fossil fuels and clearing forests. Addressing this means reducing those emissions and removing CO2 from our air. A carbon offset is literally one ton of carbon dioxide that has never been released into the atmosphere as a result of on the ground activities, such as using wind or solar power instead of fossil fuels, or by planting trees that naturally absorb and recapture carbon dioxide from the air, storing it in carbon in wood, roots, and surrounding soil. The idea is that capturing carbon dioxide and storing it in carbon in one place can help offset emissions in other places, which on balance helps mitigate climate change. This means that we can offset our personal emissions from cars and airline travel by paying farmers like John Nelson to plant trees. Globally, the carbon offset market is booming as governments, corporations, and even celebrities seek to zero out their carbon footprints. Our carbon offset project, called Zanmi Cafe, began with a group of farmers who wanted to plant coffee in the mountainous region of Boisjoli, where John Nelson lived. In Haitian Creole, Boisjoli literally means pretty woods. But ironically, Boisjoli was not wooded at all and the region had suffered from years of deforestation and soil erosion. But John and others wanted to grow coffee just as their parents once had. Planting coffee seemed like a good way to produce carbon offsets because the crop grows best in the shade, and this would necessitate planting many carbon sequestering trees. Paying farmers for carbon sequestration would help them cover the upfront costs of establishing these tree crops. Planting trees to offset CO2 emissions is hardly a new idea, but it remains one of our most cost-effective natural means of combating climate change, according to a study published by the National Academy of Sciences. In addition to soaking up carbon dioxide from the air, trees also provide a multitude of benefits, especially to farmers, including moderation of extreme temperatures and soil and water protection. Trees also help maintain soil fertility by recycling nutrients and adding carbon that feeds soil food webs. Trees diversify household incomes with products such as fruits and nuts, medicine and spices, animal fodder and building materials. Once established, trees are much easier to maintain compared to the clearing, cultivating, sowing and weeding required every year to grow crops like corn. All of these benefits make farms more productive and more resilient to extreme weather which is projected to increase with climate change. But if carbon offsets are so popular, 
and tree planting so beneficial? Why don't more small farmers participate in the global carbon market? Not surprisingly, farmers like John Nelson face opportunity costs, not the least of which is the choice between planting staple crops to feed their families and planting trees for future benefits. And in Haiti, a bag of charcoal made from trees earns 50 US dollars. This is income that can be used to buy things like medicine and school supplies, whereas it can take trees several years to become productive enough to earn that much money. And although it's easy to plant a tree, it is more challenging to ensure its early survival on a landscape full of hungry goats, drought-prone soils, and bushfires. Finally, there is the high cost of managing carbon offset projects. For example, verifying the carbon stored in living trees requires the work of expensive consultants. All of this means that it is really difficult for even the poorest farmers to enter the carbon offset market, although they have the most to gain. In fact, most of the benefits of this market go to large landowners or to massive projects that can afford to maintain and account for vast tracts of trees. When we joined forces with Partners in Agriculture and Boisjoli Farmers, the goal was to remove these barriers. The farmers would transition to more sustainable shade coffee agroforestry systems that would sequester carbon. We, the University of the South, would pay farmers upfront for the carbon held on their farms. We'd use a campus green fee that was targeted for sustainability projects. Swanee students could participate directly by conducting tree surveys for the verification process side by side with Haitian students from Partners in Agriculture's agronomy program. This would drive down the cost of the program, offer important educational experiences for everyone, and help build strong connections with our Haitian partners. Thus, Somni Cafe was born with a meeting in a church near John Nelson's home followed by the construction of a tree nursery. A year later, a couple thousand trees were distributed to a dozen Zomne Cafe farmers, and the next year, the number of participating households grew to 50. Every spring, teams of Haitian and Swanee students comb the hillsides of Boisjoli to count and measure every tree. At first, the results were disappointing. The zealous farmers had planted way more coffee than shade trees, and three quarters of the fragile seedlings had died during that first dry season. Nonetheless, the farmers received their first carbon payment based on the number of surviving trees. It averaged about $30 a family. The following year, we returned to find that farmers had planted many more shade trees, and those that had survived the previous year were now thriving. Every year, the carbon payment grew as we counted more and more trees. And at the end of the fourth year, we celebrated the first coffee harvest. All the while, our relationships with Somni Cafe farmers grew stronger. Our students spent summers in Haiti conducting on-farm research. They also played a lot of cards and dominoes with farmers late into the night. We were family. At the end of the five-year study, we found that the number of shade trees had increased by tenfold, and all the trees had grown significantly in size, storing over 120 tons of carbon across 50 tiny plots of land. This is not a huge amount of carbon compared to the gigatons of CO2 that humanity releases every year, but it does offer a model of what is possible when institutions like liberal arts colleges partner with small farmers to work towards climate change solutions. And as these young trees continue to grow, they will increasingly absorb and sequester more CO2 while offering family farms all the benefits that trees provide, like coffee to sell. Equally important, carbon offset projects can help avoid further deforestation. 
we found that over half of Zami Cafe farmers used their carbon payment to buy things like school uniforms. These are items that might otherwise be afforded by selling charcoal made from trees. The champion of all tree planters was, of course, John Nelson. We counted more than 1,000 trees on his farm, estimated to sequester 15 tons of carbon. His farm became legendary as it grew into a shady, biodiverse paradise. Using the Haitian custom of communal work parties, we organized farmer-to-farmer -farmer workshops so that John and others could share their expertise. Haiti, like many places in the world, suffers from political instability, often reaching crisis proportions. In fact, our Haitian friends tell us that current food and fuel shortages are so severe, they create pressures similar to those after the 2010 earthquake, which is really hard to imagine. We've had to cancel trips as protests against government corruption have flared and crippled the country. But our close relationships with farmers and partners in agriculture have meant that the project continues. The tree surveys are led by Haitian farmers. And last year, before Christmas, carbon payments totaling $6,000 were distributed to the 50 families of Boisjoli. John Nelson died suddenly. Maybe it was a stroke in the middle of the night. Being up in the mountains, at least a two hour walk from a hospital meant that he didn't have much of a chance. However, his legacy lives on, not only in all those trees that he planted, but in the vision that we shared. Carbon is a cash crop, one that can help mitigate climate change while uplifting rural economies. 70% of the food grown on our planet is produced by small farmers who are most vulnerable to extreme weather and natural disasters projected to be a consequence of climate change. Addressing global challenges such as climate change and rural poverty are often presented as coming at a cost to society. But planting trees is a regenerative practice that protects soils, restores degraded lands, adds productivity and resilience to family farms, and removes CO2 from our atmosphere. Imagine the carbon sequestration and the livelihoods improved if farmers everywhere, but especially in the global south, could participate in the booming carbon market. We can make a difference by choosing to offset our own emissions and by supporting projects that invest in small farmers, like John Nelson, who have so much to contribute to climate change solutions. Paying farmers to sequester carbon is a global win-win. Ultimately, it's about climate justice for all. Thank you.